Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluter channel. Today I'm doing a paid review. This is for Dr. Mark. And this is paid review 21QA118. And before we start this review, let's do a customary wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Mill Gauss. Let's jump straight in here. So here we go. This is for Dr. Mark. Hi, Archie. Hey, Archie. Love the show. Perfect blend of entertainment, advice, and information. Information. Yes, sir. That's what we hope to do. We want to provide good quality content. We want to provide good content. Uh, I've been collecting watches on and off since 2007. Call me Dr. Mark. I've sent you, wow, 300 pounds for a paid review as I've amassed a sizable collection and for all the hours of videos I've watched of yours over the years. To put things into context, I'll give you a little background. I'm a 52-year-old dentist from England in 2007 to celebrate a new contract that would set me on my way. I bought a pre-owned IWC Spitfire Chronograph. I know very little about watches and just like the look of it. I wore it when going out as my daily driver. I wore it. When going out as my daily driver was a TAG Hoya Professional 200 meter quartz. I was content for years despite a good friend of mine being into watches. When he showed me his Royal Oak, Reverso or Cartier, I was just not that interested. In 2013, a colleague needed some cash and to help him out, I purchased his Panerai Marina 164. Again, still wearing the TAG daily, but now had two watches to wear when going out, but still not really interested in them, other than how they looked. Previously, I'd been putting all my effort into building the business and raising a family, which took up all my time and money. But by 2017, all the important stuff in life had been taken care of. Let's face it, watches are a wonderful hobby, but should only be bought with spare cash. Wow! I spare cash, spare cash, I suppose. Um, yeah, I I love my, look, in my case, I've turned my hobby into a business. It's my business now. I do the whist watches as a business. I became interested in watches and had started to browse the local ADs and jewelers with a particular interest in the Rolex Sea Dweller, as I was a great fan, as I wasn't a fan of the Cyclops. Cyclops, yes, I do get you there, I must admit, I understand. Late 2016, I had put my name down for a Rolex sub no date, or a Sea Dweller, and two months later I got the call to say they had a pre-owned Rolex ceramic less than a year old for £5,000. I actually missed the call, but when I phoned two weeks later, it was still available. But how the watch world has changed. I absolutely loved it. And since then, I have plenty, pretty much fell and head long down the rabbit hole with me watching YouTube videos and reading books on watches on an almost daily basis. Yes, indeed. That is, um, that is how the hobby does go. I have tried following your advice in building a collection in so much as getting a backbone of Rolex or pre-owned as I have little history. It's so sad. The history. Man, these guys are crazy. Uh, no little history of the AD and only paying a small premium when necessary and waiting for the right deal to come along. The other brands of which I've tried to get a good selection and functions. Um, he's got a few other brands there. Let's have a look there. A few other, few other. He's got a few other. Again, all pre-owned with around 30 to 50% off the original value. One notable exception was the Speedmaster. Man on the moon! Man on the moon. I just, I was just a few months, it was just a few months old during the... Sorry, I was just a few months old when the first moon landing and my dad says I watched it uh, propped up with cushions. So to celebrate my 50th, I wanted the full AD experience. Well, that, 
you know, you, you could do a lot worse than that, can't you? Uh, and went to the flagship boutique on Bond Street in London. It was great to get the big box and all the fancy treatment, but no discount, but managed to get a few branded goodies, pen, sunglasses, etc., and a voucher for free service when needed. Okay, okay. My collection in order shown in the photos, box one. Let's, let's have a look. Cheers, Coca-Cola. Here we go. IWC Big Pilot Petite Prince Edition 2018. I gotta say this is a a let, let's just go through it as we go through this. I'll just make a comment. I love the look of it. Steel on the strap, uh big crown. Actually, it's one of the classic IWCs. Yes, I like it. I like it. I like it. Next one is a glass hood original pano reserve. In my opinion, this here it looks too familiar to the Lange one. It looks too much like a Lange one. It's kind of like a poor man's Lange one. I don't like these ones that are trying to punch harder than they can. They're trying to punch harder than they can. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. The next piece is a Lange and Sun Grand Saxonia White Gold 40 mil. The Saxonia is their ultra thin. Uh, I must say, the 40 mil is a nice size, nice big size there. Uh, the 1815 or the ultra thin, I think they're both pretty damn cool. The Saxonia. I, I like, I suppose, I, you know, sometimes I've liked the 1815 more than other times I've liked the Saxonia more. It just depends, but it is a beautiful, beautiful watch there. Then we have a Vacheron Constantine Croix de Le in steel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Hmm. Absolutely beautiful. This is lint chocolate. I like it. Now, then we got a blank pan, Villarette complete calendar with moon phase in steel. This is actually look, look, blank pan's not one of my favourite brands, but. I do like this watch. It's beautiful. Beautiful watch. Next we got a Rolex Milgau Z Blue. Yes! I'm wearing mine. Look. Look, 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 look. Mm -hmm. I love the Z Blue. How could you not love the Z Blue. Then we've got Rolex GMT Master 2 BLNR 116710. This is a Batman on an oyster bracelet. Yes, indeed. Then we've got a Rolex Explorer 2 Polar 42 mil. Absolutely love that. That is beautiful. Then we've got a Submariner Ceramic No Date, 2015. Yes, sir. And then, this is going to make me cry! Rolex 2 Daytona 2 Tone with the racing Maserati dial, 2013. Yes, yes. <laughs> I should not have got rid of that. Ah! -ha! Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. I, I, I love that racing dial. absolutely love the Maserati blue dial that is one of the coolest two tones on planet earth box two we got a Panerai Luminar 164 yes I like it I like the traditional second sub seconds at nine 
It's got a date. It's a very, very cool looking Pam. Nothing wrong with that. Then we've got a Mysa Singer. Sotora Mita Jumping Hour Complication. Yes, Meister Singer. These are these funky German watches. And i got to tell you, with a collection this big here, if he's got his bases covered, what's wrong with a, fru a few fruit, fruit Loops? That's completely okay. We've got a Vulcan Cricket Jewel Time with Alarm. Yes, 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 yes. Then we've got a Brumont Martin Baker 2 Orange Midcase My British Watch. Okie dokie. I'm not a big Brumont fan, I gotta tell you. They seem like a yeah, I just I just not a big fan of Brumont. But let's keep going. Then he's got some pieces for his wife. He's got a 36mm Rolex Explorer 1 114270. Yes, sir. That's an amazing watch. We've got a Datejust 179171 steel and gold. No date, just an oyster perpetual. Oyster Perpetual, and this here has the hidden class 26mm beautiful, elegant Rolex Ladies Oyster Perpetual. Then we've got a Bulgari Octo Romo Blue. I'm not a big Bulgari fan, but why not put it in the mix? We've got a Grand Seiko Limited Edition 20th Anniversary High Beat. Yes, sir. This is reference SBGH267. Then we've got an Amiga Speedmaster Professional Halcylite. Of course, you need that. We've got a Tudor Black Bay. Oh, sorry. His wife's are the two Rolex. The, the 36mm Explorer 1 and the Data. Sorry, I apologize there. The rest of these are his. Tudor Black Bay GMT, yes. And finally, an IWC Pilot Spitfire Chronograph, my first watch that started it all. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. My dilemma is where do I go from here? Do I need anything else? Am I done? Very good question. Uh, okie dokie, okie dokie. So, so I, I got to tell you, this is a really interesting equation here because we've got some really nice pieces. Uh, okay, so, 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 so what do I think there? What do I think? Well, looking at this collection, I would generally say the pieces that I like better, okay, if we can say that. I see you got a wolf box. The wolf, wolf box. I would say I like the the Milgauss. Definitely. I'm wearing a Milgauss. The Z Blue. You got the Batman. That's an absolute cracker. You got the Explorer 2. That's a cracker. You got the Ceramic. No date. Subs. Yes. Oh, the Maserati. 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 Blue Dial Daytona. That brings back. <laughs> I was an idiot to get rid of mine. So that, that stuff is really, that Rolex core is amazing. Then I kind of like, I like the, you've got the Saxonia Lange. That's a great piece. You've got the Vacheron, the Vacheron. Then we've got the IWC, IWC, the IWC Big Pilot, yes. I like the Speedy, and I like the, I suppose you could say, I like the Tudor, the Tuna, the Tuna. I like the Grand Seiko, I like the Pam. Yep, I, I, there's a bit of, there's a little bit of garbage in there too. We've got some garbage, we've got the Brumont, we've got other garbage we've got is we have got the um the bulgari what's a kind of a fashiony watch yeah i get it i get it you yeah, know no i can't okay, get it i get it my dilemma is where do i go from now okay it's a very very good question what would i say you know what i would say 
I would say for you, let's get a Patek, a Patek, let's get a Patek, and I would go 5130. So that's the world time, get a Patek, world time, and I would get the, doesn't matter, yellow gold, rose gold, or white gold, doesn't matter, get one of those. Now that's not the current one, that's the previous one, it's actually the model after mine. I got the 37 mil, the one I recommended to you, the 5130, that's actually a 39.5 mil, it's a little bit unloved at the moment. <coughs> I think it's a very, very, that's the one I would buy because it's a big size. And I think they got big potential because that is the biggest size world time they ever made. So I, I reckon that could be a great thing. What else would I say? You know what? I kind of, yeah, no, that's, 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 that's I'd add that because that's an amazing piece. Um, I sometimes feel like a fox in a hen house, not knowing where to turn next with so many choices. A few notable brands are missing, JLC, Paddock and AP, and I've got some milestones coming up, notably retiring and selling the practice in around three to four years and my 60th birthday. Do I need a big hitter? Yes, you do. You're a doctor. Doctor, doctor, give me the flu. Do you need a big hitter? Does a dentist need an SL Mercedes? Okay, does a dentist need an SL Mercedes? Of course they do. This might finally satisfy me. Do I sell anything? Now, i got to tell you, I think the problem with you, Dr. Mark, is you don't have enough kind. You don't have enough kunt in you. Because you need to be a bit of an asshole. So I got a feeling with you, things have been pretty sweet. You've earned good money. I would just keep what you've got. I would not sell things unless you've got a little bit of asshole in you. What should I do once retiring as I won't be able to keep adding as I have? Will I have more time to wear the watches? Look, it's, it's a great hobby. You know what? A man needs a hobby. Believe you me, a man needs a hobby. Now, you can consolidate a bit. You could sell a bit off. You know, don't, whatever you do, don't sell your Rolex. Don't sell, I, I like your big pilot. I like your Lange. I like your Vacheron. I like your Speedy. I, that's kind of what I like. I think, yeah, a man needs a hobby. So I, I would possibly, you could possibly, you could do whatever you wanted with them. I would really appreciate your advice on my collection and where I should go from here in the immediate and long-term future. So what I would say is, let me tell you what I would say, okay? I would say, let's just go through the list and I'll tell you what I think. IWC Big Pilot, look, I love it. It's beautiful, okay? The Glass Hoot Original Panna Reserve, you know what? I would sell that. I would try and sell it myself. You've got to understand the buy and sell. Don't trade it with a dealer. You've got to do your own research on Chrono. See what you think is fair and put it for sale on a forum just to understand the buying and the selling. And you know what I would buy? I'd get a Lung A1. That's what I'd do. I'd get a Lung A1, okay? That's much better. That's what you need because that would be beautiful in your box. Um, the Lung A1 Saxonia, keep that. That's beautiful. The Vacheron in steel, keep that. The Blank Pain, uh, what do I think of that? The Blank Pain, the Blank Pain, what do I think of the Blank Pain? Uh, I think I would, let's just put a question mark on that. We'll just hold off doing anything with that. Now, you cannot sell the Rolex, okay? The Milgauss, that's not to be sold. The GMT, the Batman, cannot sell. You cannot sell the Polar, cannot sell the Sub, and you do not sell that Maserati Blue Dial Daytona. Now, as for the Pam, the Pam, I would probably say, in all honesty, I'd possibly get rid of it, okay? It's not really going anywhere. Uh, you didn't tell me how much you paid your friend for it, so, uh, but I'd, I'd possibly piss that one off. The Meister Singer, look, it's okay to buy cheap, crappy, kind of inexpensive things, but come on, you're a doctor, okay? You drive an SL, you're a doctor, you don't need that sort of garbage. I'd get rid of that. The Vulcan, it's a nothing watch. It's absolute dog shit, okay? Just, it's, it's all, it's, it's kind of like the Meister Singer. Yeah, it's fancy wancy. 
you know what? If you've got a junior staff member or you, or you want to give it as a present. Give the Meister Singer and the Vulcan as a present. It gets you off the hook. Give away your crap. That's what I would do. The Brumont, don't buy that. That's garbage. Those Giles and, and what's the other dickhead's name? You know, Giles and Miles, I think it is. You know, they're just a bunch of poncy English rich spoiled kids. Yeah, I hate the brand. I really, really hate the brand. I hate them. And uh, they're just poncy English spoiled gits. That's what I think there. So I'd piss that off. What would I buy? Your Rolex collection's amazing. Um, look, I would say to you, I would get more. I'd get another Lange. Get rid of that stupid glass hoot. I'd get a Lange 1. I would get rid of... I would get a Lange 1. I'd get a... I reckon I'd get maybe... Look, maybe Paddock's not the brand for you, but I, I'd say maybe Lange might be better for you, okay? That's what I would do. Paddocks, what would I get in Paddock? I, I, two, I'd get, I'd go two ways. I'd get a complication and I'd get a, I'd get a simple Calatrava. I'd get a 5196, 5196 Calatrava. I don't care yellow gold, white gold, rose gold or platinum. Get one of those. I'd get the World Time, the 5130. And I'd enjoy it. Man, you are so lucky. You did the hard yards. You went to uh, university. You studied, studied hard. That's the reason the dentist gets the SL Mercedes Benz, and he also he also um, he also he gets the Mercedes Benz SL, and he has beautiful stuff. Hey, Arch, just a quick note. Wife was finding her Rolex date just two tone twenty six too small after wearing her Explorer one. Bullshit! Bullshit! That's a great. I love the twenty six mil. I have traded it for the elegant paddock five o five three J. I'm going to get a couple of straps to dress it up a little. It looks stunning on her wrist at thirty six mil, and the open case. Yes, it's got the hinge back. Was this a good swap? All the best, Mark. Look, i got to be honest with you. It's a different genre. The, the, the Rolex is waterproof. The Paddock is not waterproof. So you've got to be very careful with the Paddock. She's still got the Explorer 1, so that's kind of okay. <laughs> I think it's actually, to be honest with you, the 5053 is a beautiful Paddock. It is beautiful. Yes, I think that's okay. Um, you should have asked me before you jumped in. You haven't told me what money or whatever it was there, but... Yeah, it's probably not terrible. That's a great paddock. That is a absolutely beautiful paddock. The five because they have the I know the five one three five is the biggest thirty seven mil, whereas that one there is actually a bit smaller. So I think it's about thirty five mil, thirty five mil. So I'd say yeah, that's not a terrible way to go. Be careful, dealers are not your friends. They will shaft you as soon as look at you. They're like Mercedes Benz dealers. You know, they're not really your friend. <clears throat> so just remember that. Uh, enjoy life with the SL. Enjoy what life with the wife. Happy wife, happy life. I think you got some great pieces there. Take care. I love you so much. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Amazing collection. That's why you do the hard yards. To build a beautiful watch collection and drive around in a Mercedes-Benz SL. Well done, Dr. Mark, and I will see you in the next one. Guys, remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I need paid reviews. Paid reviews keep me full-time on YouTube. Without paid reviews, I would sink very, very fast. Please get a paid review, 50 US dollars for a paid review. I'll tell you the honest truth. I'll tell you honestly what I think. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm Archie Luxury, and I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW.
like, subscribe, and tell your friends. And don't be afraid to get a paid review. 50 US dollars for a paid review. It helps me stay full time on YouTube. And I will see you in the next one. 50 US dollars paid review. I can't survive on Google Ads. I need your support. And guys, you could also sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay as little as a dollar a month to keep me on YouTube. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.